Hi, and welcome back to Let's Talk Forex with Alison and Chris. This is episode 29, coming to you from sunny South Africa. There's both of us in the same place, well, the same country for once. Um, this week, we're talking about uh, the basic order types. So we're going to be covering market orders, limit orders, stop orders. Uh, so hope you enjoy it. Remember to like and subscribe, um, and you can get in touch with either of us. Uh, you can find our, uh, our contacts on fxscouts.com and tradeforexsa.co.za. Thanks so much. Hi, Chris. Welcome to sunny South Africa. Hi, Alison. Thank you very much. It's um, it's a real pleasure to be here. I tell you, bit warmer than than Portugal, I can imagine. Yeah, a bit warmer than Portugal. Though it was a bit chilly last night when we when uh, when I arrived. Actually, it was still there was a cold wind blowing off the sea. But today, when the sun comes out, I mean, it's it's scorching here. And um, as we've discussed before, I'm quite I'm quite pale, so I'm a bit <laughs> wary. I'm a bit wary of stepping out there um, for too yeah. long. But no, it's it's lovely to be here. Oh good. I'm so I'm so glad you are here and uh and it's very exciting that we're going to be meeting for the first time in the flesh in a couple of weeks time. Yeah, that's true. Very exciting. Yeah. It's so yeah. weird because I feel like I've known you I know you so well and it's um you know we've been we've known each other for years but this is the first time we're actually going to meet. Yeah. Yeah, this is what covid does, I guess. Yeah, exactly. The joys of covid, <laughs> one of the many joys of covid. Yeah, exactly. But uh, today we're going to be talking about um, different order types that traders come across in Forex trading and how to use them. Uh, as we spoke about last week, we, we talked about uh, how, you know, different order types, it's something we haven't, we, we've covered briefly, but we haven't sort of gone into too much detail on order types. Um, so basically, in trading, an order is an instruction that a trader gives to a broker via their trading platform to either buy or sell an instrument at a particular price or in a, a particular price range. Um, and the term order basically refers to how you enter or how you exit a trade. And when you place a trade, you can, you can lay out conditions on how your broker will execute the order, but you can also, um, you can also stipulate time limitations and different price restrictions on the execution of that order. Yeah, you're right. There's exactly there's there's a few different ways you can mess around with uh, limitations and restrictions of it, and they and they can be quite useful. Which is you know brings us on to why why are there different order types? Um, you know, and they the reason why is because it gives traders flexibility and it helps them customize exactly how they want to do their trades. And most importantly for me, uh, and I think for many traders out there, it allows you to mitigate risk. It allows you to control your risk levels. So these different trade orders they're a really important part of trading because. If you use the right one, you can ensure that your trades are executed at the price that you intend and at a time that you intend. And because you can have this kind of control with different order types, you can it, you can maximize your profits in the market. They really help you maximize your profits, and they also help you, as I said, mitigate mitigate your losses. So I think first off, it's really important to know what sh- what each order type means. Uh, so then we can walk people through how they how they can benefit from the from the features of these different order types and how they can help them out um, in their day-to-day trading. Yeah, exactly. It's very important to understand what they are. So um, orders basically fall into two categories. Um, and if you've ever traded on a trading platform, particularly MT4 and MT5, uh, you'll notice that when you place an order or you open that new order window, you will have the option of either placing a market order, and this basically is an instant order executed at the price that your broker has provided, so whichever price you'll, you see there. And then it, you can also make a, you can also uh, execute a pending order. Um, and this is an order that will be executed at a later time at a price that you specify. Um, and then pending orders can be further divided into limit orders stop and stop orders. Um, but we'll get into more detail on, on these different orders just now. Yeah, exactly. We'll get to that. But first, we're going to go through the most basic one, which is a market order, which I think probably most of our listeners will, will understand what a market order is. And um, what you're doing with a market order is you're saying that you're going to buy or sell at whatever the market price is when you submit your order. Um, this is the most basic type of order. Um, and with a market order, you, you put an order to buy or sell an instrument immediately. 
uh, which means that it will be filled, your order is going to be filled at or close to, which we're going to get to in a bit, or close to its uh, current price. So if you're selling a currency pair, your order will be placed at a price or close to the number displayed as bid on your trading platform. But if you're buying a currency pair, your order is going to be filled at or again close to the uh, the price showed as ask. So as an example, you know, the, the bid, let's say the bid price for the Euro USD is 1.2140. You'll see the ask price might be something like 1.2142. And uh, the difference between these two prices, as we've discussed before, is called the spread, and this is the broker's fee. And in this case, the difference between um, the, the 1.2140 and the 1.2142, that spread there is two pips. Yes. Um, and so if you want to buy the Euro USD with a market order, it is going to be sold to you at the ask price, which is the higher price there. It's 1.2142. So you're going to place a market order. You click buy on your trading platform, and then it instantly executed a buy order um, at that price. And so, the, I mean, the market orders are simple, and um, what they do is they guarantee the broker is going to execute the order instantaneously or as fast as uh, latency and volatility allows, but it does not guarantee an execution price. So that is the one downfall of the market order is um, mm. is that it can be quite dangerous to use on very volatile instruments like uh, cryptocurrencies because mm. your actual price can be quite different to what you're seeing on the quote. Um, and this, as we've sp spoken about many times, um, some actually something we spoke about last week is known as slippage. Um, mm -hmm. And slippage is more of a, po a problem with larger trade sizes and it also depends on what you're trading. Um, and as I said, you know, uh, cryptos might be, because they're so volatile, you, you might not see your, your price uh, with the market order. But with something like major forex pairs, you're less likely to see slippage because they're, they're such a liquid market with huge amounts of buyers and sellers. You might not see as much slippage. Um, but it is yeah. something to be aware of when you're trading that, um, you know, and, and it's something we talked about on the demo accounts as well, is that a demo might not... You might not see that slippage because of the fact that it's a demo account. So, so you might see the price that you're executing. Um, you, your order might go through at that price. Whereas on a real account, um, you'll see that your price might be quite different to, to what you thought you'd, you'd bought the instrument or sold the instrument at. So it's very important to, to be aware of that difference. Yeah, exactly. And, then, and you're more likely to see slippage at times of... Um... Of high volatility, like you said, in cryptos, but also, you know, in forex pairs, you know, after a big news event, um, yes. you, you might see slippage as well. So, yeah, so market order will, is going to happen as quickly as possible, quickly as your broker can do it at a price as close to as close to the market price when you click that button. Um, but don't don't expect it to, um, to happen all the time. And as and as we I think we discussed last week uh, when we were talking about demo accounts, there's positive and there's negative slippage. So you can get a better price uh, than you thought possible. But then you can also get worse prices. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's um, that's an Im the important disadvantage of, of market orders. But uh, let's now have a chat about the pending orders. The first one we want to talk about is something called the limit order, uh, which is also very commonly referred to as a take profit order. And this is an order to buy or sell at a specified price or better. So a sell limit order is filled at the specified price or higher, whereas a buy limit order it will be executed at the specified price or lower. So yeah, limit orders, what they're very good at is they allow you flexibility to be very precise in defining the entry or exit point of a trade. The problem with them is that they don't guarantee that you will enter or exit a position because if the price that you specify is not met, your order is not going to be executed. And a limit order that is attached to uh, an existing open position or a pending entry order uh, with the purpose of closing that position is referred to as a take profit order. I mean, this is the most common, this is the most common uh, limit order that, that, uh, that people use is a take profit. But yeah, a, people got to be careful because if it doesn't, it doesn't hit that point that you specify, then, uh, then it's not executed. And uh, as I was, as I mentioned earlier, um, you'll see a market order and a pending order. And then often your platform will give you the option of setting a stop loss and a take profit. And a take profit is just what you've mentioned now. Um, which brings us basically to the stop loss. Um, and it's also known as a stop order. So stop loss is a stop order. 
um, and is in order to buy or sell the instrument once the price of whatever instrument you're trading reaches a specified price known as the stock price. And once this price is reached, then the stop order becomes a market order. Now, this is quite a, uh, an important distinction, is that it becomes a market order, which means, um, you know, it's instantaneous. So learning how to set up the stop order um, on the trading platform is, is absolutely crucial. And it's something we mentioned, I think we mentioned in most podcasts since we started, mm-hmm. um, is it's, it's, it's a way of managing your risk. And it's, sure, it's the surest way for traders to prevent huge losses when prices unexpectedly move in the wrong direction. So it basically mitigates your risk if the price goes against you. And if you're in a long position, it is known as a sell stop order. If you're in a short position, it is known as a buy stop order. So for example, I know we're talking lots of numbers here. Um, We will be uh, creating an article on this uh, in the uh, next couple of weeks. Um, But if you went long or bought your USD at 1.2230, to limit your maximum loss, you might set a stop loss order at 1.2200. So that's a 30 pip difference. And this means if you're dead wrong and the euro drops to 1.2200 instead of moving up, then your trading platform automatically executes a sell order at 1.2200 um, at the best available price and it closes your position out for a 30 pip loss. And stop losses are very useful if you don't want to sit in front of your monitor all day, uh, worried that you'll lose all your money. So we always, you know, especially for beginner traders, setting stop losses is absolutely crucial. Yeah, exactly. You need to learn how to do it as a beginner trader and then uh, experienced traders use them all the time. I mean, everybody uses them. If you want to keep hold of your money, you have to to know how to use stop loss. And then um, then we come on to, there's a, a type of stop loss order called a trailing stop which is a slightly more complex version. Uh, a trailing stop is, is a type of stop loss order that it's attached to a trade, but the trailing stop moves as the price mm-hmm. fluctuates. A, a, stop, a standard stop order won't move. But uh, let's, say with the, let's say that you've decided to short the USD JPY, right? And it's at 90.80, and you've got a trailing stop of 20 pips. That means that your stop loss is set at 91 flat, Okay. It's a 20 pip difference from your entry. Mm. If the price goes down and it hits 9.6, your trailing stop, because it's going to be moving with your profit profit potential, it would move down to 9.80, right? And that's your break even point because that's where you entered. That's where you entered the market. So now your stop loss is where you entered. But you've got to know with the trailing stop is that it will stay at this new price level if the price goes against you. It will not widen if the market goes against you. So if the so if the if the USD JPY starts moving back up again, your trailing stop is going to stay in the same place. But let's say the USD USD JPY keeps on going down, it hits nine point four, then your stop would move to nine point ninety point six, right? And now you've got a twenty pip profit. And the great thing about trailing stop is that it's gonna it will remain open as long as the price does not move against you by whatever specified amount you've said. In this case, twenty pips. Mm-hmm. So if the if the if your price if the price still still keeps moving in your favor, your stop loss is just going to keep on with it, and it's going to stay twenty pips behind you. The downside to trailing stops, obviously, is if you get your technical analysis wrong, right? And so, with it, let's say in this case, you're thinking that the maximum drawdown in this case uh, before you want is going to be is going to be twenty pips. Let's say you get that wrong, and it's actually going to be twenty five pips, or it's going to be thirty pips. It's going to bust through your trailing stop, but then it's going to turn around and go back up again. Right. Let's say it keeps on it keeps on moving the way it keeps on moving the way that you originally thought it would, um, but it doesn't matter now because your trailing stop's been broken. So the real trick with trailing stops is getting your technical analysis right before you open them, making sure that your indicators that you're using to set uh, to set the support levels or the resistance levels are accurate or as accurate as they can be, and and even potentially having a look at it and modifying modifying your trailing stop, which you can do um, in all good trading platforms. And maybe opening it a little bit wider, so keep an eye on them. But um, they're incredibly useful tools. Um, and as I've said to you, Alison, the reason why I love them is because once you hit a break even, then that that trade note is no longer part of your risk matrix. Whatever percentage you've allocated of your capital to a trade that day is now back is now yours again. Yeah, it's no longer at risk. It's no longer at risk. So they're they're very useful. You just got to make sure that you um, that you get your technical analysis right yeah. and that you get um, and you figure that. 
so yeah, and, and with a trailing stop, once um, the market high price hits your trailing stop price, then it becomes like a standard trailing standard stop order. It becomes a it becomes a market order, and mm -hmm. it will close your position at the best available price, and and that's um, and that'll be the end of it. Um, the one thing that we always talk about with trailing stops is that on C Trader, when you set a trailing stop, it is then set on the um, server side, whereas with MT4 and MT5, it'll only be set on your actual terminal, which means that if your power goes out, as in load shedding, or you have, you know, you need to get up and go and do something and you're not at your computer, those training stops will will no longer be there. So that's a, one advantage of, of using CTrader over MT4 and MT5 with the training stop particularly. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Um, and then basically what, what kind of order a trader uses makes a huge difference in the price that they pay and a trader's profit, as we've just spoken about. But it helps to think of each order type as a, as a specific tool that is suited to its own purpose, as you've just described, uh, Chris. I mean, trading stops are, are, are very nice tools, um, but they might not work in all situations. Um, so it's important to think about that whether you are selling or buying a, a, a Forex pair, for example, the most important thing to think about um, when deciding on which type of order you, you'll use is um, what are your goals for that, that uh, trade? Do you want to control the price of your, your trade? Are you looking to have your order filled quickly at the current market price so that you don't miss out on a trade? So depending on your goal, depending on your trading style, on your, on your trading strategy, you can determine which order is the most suitable to achieve your goal. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're, they're useful tools. And, and as I think the most important thing there is, yeah, is your trading strategy and your risk management strategy yeah. um, and, and what your analysis tells you. And then use that to, and once you have you know what you're doing, then use that to decide which is the best order type for you. But as, as we all know, and uh, you know, dealing, trading on the Forex market is always going to involve some speculation, right? You're never going to be, you're never going to be right all the time. So regardless of your level of proficiency uh, in trading, um, it's, uh, it's always, always important to, to try out different order, orders on, uh, on a demo account before you start with any real money. Um, yeah. I know it's something we bang on about, but um, especially with, especially when you're not used to these order types, some of the ones we've been discussing, you know, if you want to see how they practice, how they work in real life. So yeah, always open a demo account, demo, sorry, a demo account, um, <laughs> get a, get a Forex pair, you know, mess around with limit orders, market orders, stop trailing stops and, and see how it, see how it works before you, before you start trading with, with real money and, and see how they fit into, you'll probably start having ideas. Um, you're probably having ideas if you're thinking of, of how, what kind of trading strategy you're going to follow and think about and try and have a think about how these uh, different orders, order types are going to fit into that trading strategy. There's some more advanced orders, which we haven't gone into here, but, um, but maybe something for a later date, I think advanced order yes. types. I mean, we've covered, we've covered the, we've covered the important ones, but next week it was, uh, it's going to be our last podcast for the year, Alison, because we're going, we're having Christmas break, aren't we? We are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think it's been quite a, it's been an interesting season. I've really enjoyed, I've really enjoyed these podcasts. Yeah, no, so have I. And I think, um, I think we've been getting better at them as time goes by. And I think they've been from some of the feedback we've been getting recently. I think they're, I'm really, it's really nice to see so many beginners, um, actually finding, finding useful information here. Um, yeah. it feels good. It feels good. And we're very happy to doing this. And so, so yeah, we'll be back next year. Uh, well, we've got one more. We've got one more. Um, one more. We're going to do next week. We're going to look a um, bit of a Christmas special. We're going to look at some of the most notorious trades in history. So some of the biggest wins and some of the biggest losses, and who did them, why they did them, what were they thinking, and and what <laughs> happened to them as <laughs> as a result of uh, especially the losses. Yeah, which should be so that could be that could be a little bit of fun and maybe maybe yeah. a word of warning to to some of you some traders out there. Um, yeah. And then after that, we're we're going to be off for a few weeks, but we'll be back in we'll be back in January. So. Yeah, back in early January. I think the first week of January will probably starts again. But this will be episode number. Well, today is number twenty nine, and next week will be number thirty. Number thirty three zero, getting up there. It's good. Yeah. Feels good. It cool. does. Yeah. Anyway, All right, thanks, Alison. Chris. Well, yeah, no, thank you, and um, I'll speak to you next week. Some uh, trade wins and losses. Yeah. yeah, looking forward to it. Thanks, Chris. Cool. Bye.
Ja, das ist so.